Hey y'all, Data Guy back here today with a user requested video on what kind of checks you want to run for your Airflow environment, how to upgrade it, um, and what needs to be performed so that there's no dependency break. Um, and I'll be using a local environment because when you're testing uh, any upgrades to your production environment, you're always gonna wanna test them either locally or in a dev instance, um, because obviously, Testing in prod is no bueno, um, as we all have heard many, many jokes about. Um, so today I'll be using um, a Astro CLI generated image. So quick way just to download and install Airflow. Um, but most of these concepts that I'm discussing um, can be applied to really any kind of Airflow deployment. Um, the mechanisms with which you're doing so just might be a little bit different. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see what we can do. So the first thing you're going to want to do um, when you're upgrading Airflow uh, environment is first making sure that all of the packages that you're using within your DAGs uh, are compatible or have their ver or are of the compatible version for that newer version of Airflow that you want to upgrade to. Um, so sometimes, or a lot of the times, when Airflow releases a new version, uh, if you have your packages locked to an older version, like I have here, you can see with HTTP, um, those older versions of the packages won't be compatible um, with the newest version of Air or the newer version of Airflow for a myriad of reasons. Um, so one kind of quick and easy way you can get around this is just by removing uh, any dependency locks. Um, but the issue with that is that you can also maybe you've architect or you've used those providers in such a way um where you're relying on that older version of the provider because you know hey you a variable's name was changed in the newer version of that provider package um so it's not a every solution uh, you know solution for everyone maybe you know you need to make sure that you're locked to a certain version um or you know figure out a way to address hey what version do i need to upgrade to for this to be compatible um but in general that's a quick easy way to kind of just you know eliminate where a lot of the errors come from, from those lock package versions. Um, but I wouldn't just go blindly and you know unlock all your package versions. That's obviously not best practices. Um, so what I like to do is actually kind of generate a new image um, with those packages installed. So basically copy and pasting over those requirements um, and then trying to build that new Airflow image with those requirements installed. Um, now, I'm gonna show you right now a command or the Astro CLI um, that just eliminates the need for you to actually build that separate environment on yourself, um, where it will basically build a Docker image of that older version of Airflow with all those requirements. Then it will attempt to create a version of that new or a Docker uh, image for the new version of Airflow um, using your requirements. And then it will run a pip list um, so it's going to pip free. So save all the requirements you have installed in your existing deployment. Um, then it's going to try and install them on the newer uh, version of Airflow, the new deployment. Um, and then using pip list. So if you're not using this uh, CLI command, you can just use pip list to then look at all these dependencies and see which ones are out of date, need to be upgraded um, to the latest version or to a newer version to be compatible with the newest version of Airflow that you want to use. Um, and so if you want to run this, if you're using Astronomer, uh, then what you can do is just Astro Dev Upgrade Test. And as you can see here, we have, are basically just building um, a Docker image of our old version. So obviously this is going to build successfully. And then we're going to take all the base level configurations that we have in our existing Docker image and try to build a new Airflow environment with those uh, with those dependencies. Um, this will also test the, or, or try and run those DAGs as well and make sure those are compatible. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. Right now, I just want to focus on, hey, how do I make sure that all my dependencies are in order so I don't run into any package conflicts um, when I'm trying to upgrade my Airflow environment? Um, so I'm going to pause for a second while this runs through all of its uh, tests, and then I'll kind of show you, go deeper into what that actually looks like. So here you can see it's built, it's tested that image, and then it'll tell me um, exactly what dependency changes I need to make. Um, so you can see it's referencing that dependency conflict file um, that is generated here. Um, and again, you could basically just run a pip list or just copy and paste requirements into a newer version of Airflow and test it that way. Um, or you could 
create a newer version with those requirements um, and then pip list, make sure that they're actually compatible. Um, and here, if you're using this dependency report, it does provide some, you know, just really good information about, hey, these are the most important ones you'll need to update. Um, so patchy airflow update, this is just kind of implicit with upgrading airflow. Um, so you can kind of ignore that one. Uh, your major updates, these are going to be ones that you definitely need to make. They're very likely to have breaking changes. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you actually manually, or make sure that these are all upgrades to their latest versions. Um, then these minor updates, you likely will want to upgrade them to their latest versions, but it's not hugely necessary because it detects there's not gonna be any uh, breaking changes. Uh, this is just adding any Airflow providers that are now installed at the base image. Um, and then this is showing any uh, Airflow providers that are removed from um, the, the base distribution um, of this image. Um, so just showing you, hey, what were the major changes here? Um, which ones are supported? Um, and then these unknown updates, you'll also want to check to make sure that, hey, um, these are all tools I'm using and that they're all uh, compatible um, with my newer version of Airflow. So you're gonna wanna update those as well. Um, if you're using an astronomer image, a lot of these things would just automatically be updated. So you really just kind of want to focus on the ones from your requirements text um, because everything else, they're part of that base install and they'll be updated automatically when you're moving to a new version of Airflow. If you're not, you're probably not going to see as many providers there, but you're going to want to pay uh, more attention, or not more attention, but just you know make sure that you go through that one by one and make sure that all of those um, updates have actually occurred. Um, because it won't happen for you <laughs> um, because you're, you know, you're managing your own dependencies and your own requirements. So you have to manually alter them. Um, now, the second part is once you've made sure you've got all your requirements, all your dependencies in order, um, what you'll do is run a DAG test. Um, so you can run this. So what I would recommend when you're testing your DAGs um, is you can either, you know, use the Astro Dev upgrade test. Uh, but if you're not using um, Astro, what and you don't have the Astro CLI, what I'd recommend is you create that new image. So you've got your, you know, which dependencies you have to change, you know, which requirements you have to change, you make those changes, you uh, build a new version of Airflow with whatever version you're upgrading to. Um, so you know, just choosing the or setting the variable for whatever version of Airflow, um, build a separate um, testing environment. So either kill, um, or just run in parallel um, a new Airflow environment and that older uh, Airflow environment, and then bring your DAGs into the newer Airflow environment um, to run uh, a PyTest on them. Um, so what I just showed there was Astro Dev Bar, so you're gonna just wanna run that. Um, but what you can also do is if you have some specific suite of testing that you wanna run, um, you know, you can either bring a testing folder in um, and use that and then at run Astro Dev PyTest and then run whatever individual tests you want. Um, and so the way you'll do that is with Astro, you'll just run Astro Dev PyTest or you can just PyTest and then reference um, the specific DAG file one by one, pass it a list, give it a folder um, and it'll run um, a basic, you know, just, hey, does this DAG parse? Will it work in this environment? Um, and that will help you identify, hey, where are the errors within this DAG um, that are causing it to either, you know, not be visible within the Airflow UI. Uh, maybe you're not getting clear errors with that little error message at the top of the Airflow UI. Um, and you can see here, it will, so when you run the PI test, so even though my DAG's parsed, um, my PI test, where I have my specific um, kind of testing framework, um, it's actually failing some of the checks in there. So one of the tests that I have is just making sure um, that every DAG has retries built in so that they will um, retry any failed DAGs. Um, so this is where if you have any individual tests, any additional tests you wanna run um, as you're upgrading to make sure, you know, hey, any changes you might've needed to make to your DAGs um, to make them compatible, haven't decreased the code quality within your DAGs and haven't moved it away from your organization's parameters for code quality. Um, so after that, we've got our, uh, DAGs tested. We've got our requirements, everything tested. Um, so we're on that new, we have a testing newer version of Airflow. Um, and so what I would recommend when you're actually pushing to production, um, is it, and this depends on the mission criticality of your DAG, um, but running a blue green upgrade configuration. Um, so with Astro, you know, you can upgrade in place. And so if you've tested it locally, it runs locally. Um, I'd recommend also testing it in a staging environment. So upgrading, you know, kind of a 
staging environment you have to mimic your production environment so that, hey, once this goes into the cloud, it's you know running on um, the same hardware as my production environment. I want to make sure that there's no additional changes, you know, because when you're installing it um, on an external system, there might be some incongruencies, there might be some issues when you're uh, getting ready to upgrade. And so making sure you have that additional step of outside of, you know, just my local environment, um, testing it on, you know, fake production, uh, maybe feeding it some production or fake production data um, to make sure that I can still process it. And then once it's passed all of those checks, um, then you deploy that newer version of Airflow um, onto your production deployment. Or if you go blue green, you create a, and you can't, because you can't do in-place upgrades, um, then what you'll do is, you know, you'll have your production deployment, you'll spin up a new deployment um, running the newer version of Airflow, and then gradually, um, you know, turn on the DAGs in that new production uh, while you turn off the old DAGs in that older production environment. Uh, however, if you're using Astro, you can just deploy directly um, from staging into production um, and any in-flight DAGs and tests will still be completed so you don't have that interruption of workflow there. Um, but if you're doing that, you really wanna make sure that you test it um, in a staging environment. And then also as part of your CI CD pipeline, I'd really recommend saving that older version um, of that production environment, just in case there are any unexpected problems, you have an image that you can quickly roll back to um, so that you're not stuck um, with a broken uh, version of Airflow. Um, and that is really all I wanted to show you to talk about. Um, I really hope that this helps my man, Karan Gupta. Um, so without further ado, I Karan, if this didn't help you, um, please let me know. But if it did, please like, subscribe, and share me your friends. I'm just trying to help the world out with their data. Uh, so have a good one. Data guy out.